Well, hello again. You can't get away from me no matter how hard you try. Today we're going to be talking about Chapter 8, Ethics, Sections A through E. And ethics is my favorite part of philosophy. I got a couple of things I want to say about uh, some of the philosophers, and then I've got uh, some other videos for you to look at to help you with, uh, with some others. First of all, on uh, Gilbert Harmon, uh, chapter, um, page 502, uh, he basically wants to argue that um, morality is a kind of social contract, um, that moral values make sense only in the context of a particular community. Now, I have a couple of questions about that. What about Nazism, for example? Do we want to say that that's wrong? Even though that particular community agreed with those values. So, are there really no absolute values? And his, um, his example on page 503 of um, the fictional murder of Bernard Ortcut. Is this illustration really making morality relative when he says we can only judge he's a criminal, someone to be hunted down by the police, an enemy of peace-loving citizens, that it's not moral? Aren't Aren't our laws in some way based on morality? Well, Thomas Aquinas um, makes his argument based on the use of what he calls natural law. Natural law is that part of the divine law, God's will for the universe, that we can know using our reason. There's another part of the divine law, um, excuse me, another part of the eternal law, God's plan for the world as it exists in the mind of God, that we know through revelation, and for Aquinas the two can never contradict. Catholic moral teaching, and I'm leading into uh, the next article by um, Corvino. Catholic moral teaching based on Thomas Aquinas is that homosexuality is contrary to natural law because it violates the natural telos, the natural goal of sex, which is procreation. Anything that interferes with that uh, natural goal, um, Catholic moral teaching views as contrary to natural law. That's why the Catholic Church, for example, opposes the use of contraceptives because they're blocking the natural telos of sex, which is procreation. It's not that they're artificial. My glasses are artificial. But there's no problem with wearing glasses in Catholic uh, moral theology because my glasses are cooperating with my eyes helping them to achieve their natural telos, which is to see. Now, Corvino is going to challenge that concept uh, and questioning what do we mean when we say that homosexuality is unnatural. Uh, and I, I wanted to make a comment about um, his last point uh, what is disgusting or offensive is unnatural. And, of course, his argument is going to be that, well, what's disgusting or offensive varies with who you are. Um, he mentions eating snails. I actually did that last um, summer in France. Had escargot, which is surprisingly good. 
Uh, I didn't think I was going to want to try it, but I did. Uh, what you actually taste is the garlic butter. Um, last person I'm going to talk a little bit about... Um, is actually in on page, bottom of page 514, top of page 515, the story about Abraham Lincoln uh, rescuing the piglets uh, and his comment about um, that he would have, it was selfish because he would have no peace of mind um, thinking about that old sow worrying about the piglets. I would point out that he would only be troubled by that if he was a particular kind of person. Um, that is, a person who had empathy for other, not only other people, but in this case, other creatures. And that's going to lead us to something we're going to talk about next time, which is the role of sentiment, of feeling in ethics. But for now, I'm going to turn you over to some other videos. They're going to talk about Ayn Rand, about Aristotle, and I'll see you later.